Uh, who else are we? We are uh, on YouTube. I'm sure we're on some other channels. Uh, I'm Steve Rosenberg, host of the Think Tank Live on Bigger Pockets on Thursdays. I've been uh, doing a good enough job that they actually named it, so I guess that's a good sign. So we're going to let some people jump on here as we get going. Uh, first of all, thanks to Bigger Pockets for allowing me to do this. Uh, my name's again Steve Rosenberg with Mind Property Management. I'm their vice president of investor education. I'm also an investor and I am a uh, entrepreneur and a speaker. So today we have some great guests. My friend Kakoa and Corey are going to come. These guys are just dominating everywhere. Uh, to, to say that would be an understatement. One's in Hawaii, the other one's in Seattle. They're buying stuff all over the place. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one of them thinks that he's such a, a good investor that he's going to delay coming on uh, so that he can do a share entrance. I'm not really sure what he's doing, but he's uh, coming on. So I've got Corey here with me, and Corey and I are going to wrap a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about what he's doing out in Hawaii <clears throat> and everything that is going on with them. So this is going to be a great show. You're going to be able to ask them questions. So uh, let us know where you're watching from and give us a thumbs up. This works really, truly the best way by engagement. So make sure that you guys talk, ask us questions, ask these guys questions because these guys are going vertical in many, many different arenas. And it's it's pretty exciting watching them. I've been fortunate enough to help them with a lot of things that they're doing uh, on the property management side and other things. They've asked me questions. And uh, over the years, we've really done a lot of uh, collaborating and uh, just really, really great guys. So uh, let's get them going. Wow, we got people from a lot of places, huh? We got Kent, Washington, Jacksonville, Florida. We got Mexico, Houston, Chicago, Orlando, Irvine. Nice. I know we get a lot of people from all over the world. We'll probably get um, some uh, military. Uh, we got South Africa. Cool. Garrett? All right. I like Gary. He's, uh, he's got some good questions. Last week, he had some good questions with AJ, too. So hopefully you got some good ones for these guys. So if everyone is ready, Corey, are you are you here? Are you available? There he yes, is. Sir. What's, What's up, happening, Steve? brother? How you doing, man? Good, man. Good to see you again. Good to I'm see Steve. you. I know your, your business partner wants to have a grand entrance, kind of like share. So he wants to take his time and, you know, kind of present himself. I'm not sure what he's doing. But, Fashionably uh, late, always. Yeah, he's always <laughs> late, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. So, Corey, man, first of all, thanks for being on. You are in Hawaii, correct? Correct. And you guys are just freaking killing it out there. Tell everybody what you're doing, who you are, kind of what your background is. And I just want to dig in and give everyone some serious knowledge on this show today. Yeah, sure. Well, oh, here comes oh, Kiko. To show up. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Sorry, man. I was trying so hard to use the wrong technology, but you know, it's all right. Oh. Appreciate you showing up today, man. I appreciate it. Well, nice style. 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 Yeah. Style. Yes, I had yes. To go, I had to go get in a quick surf session, and you know, now now we're all good to go. Did gotta get your hair right. I know the feeling. I know how it is, man. I know how it is. <laughs> um, so uh First of all, Kokoa, thanks for being here, man. I, I, we've got a long history of friendship. You guys are great guys. Uh, if there's any two guys that are out there just grinding it out and doing it, it it's you. So uh, let's. I, I was just asking Corey, you know, just give us a brief introduction of who you guys are, what you're doing, and and then let's 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 go, man. I want to get into this with you guys. Nice. Well, thanks for having us, Corey. Go ahead, you start. I got to still get the sand out of my ears. <laughs> <Must be wrong>. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so we're uh, primarily based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. And so that's where uh, I am right now. And Kiko is up there in uh, Seattle, Washington area. And we've been investing uh, quite a while, actually. <laughs> I can't it's even for for years. But, um, we're in multiple markets. So Hawaii um seattle washington and also las vegas we have a project that just hit the market so we have we do projects anywhere ranging from fix and flip to ground up construction and uh mini developments i'd say uh, especially here in hawaii 
So that's kind of, but w- through that, we have a bunch of stuff that we're working on that we can probably go into and maybe Kiko, you can talk about if you'd like. Yeah, I, last I heard you guys own half the Raiders or something in Vegas. Wasn't that the plan or something out there? Yeah, you guys were- That's the plan, man. Actually, we were going to try to build the stadium too. We thought, let's get that contract, you know, and then at the same time, get a profit off the concessions. And there then after go. that, we're charged for parking. And then after that, you know, own half the team so we get all the uh, jersey and, uh, you know, mer- merchandise revenue. Ra- so. black- that's right. It's a Raider Nation, man. I grew up in L.A. Yeah. I know the deal. Um, yeah, all right. I- so, so let's talk about, you, you use the term vertical integration, right? And, and I, I'm, can you explain what that is to people? Because if people, listen, everybody watching, these guys are doing property management. They're doing land construction. These are the guys. And, and I would say, Corey and Coco, you guys are in some of the, probably the toughest markets that exist um, as far as price points and trying to figure, you know, squeeze that juice out of deals. So, if there's anybody that's got to be creative, it's probably these two guys. And now you guys are expanding out into other markets. Um, so explain what the what the vertical integration is. And then also, was that a desire or was that a necessity to for you guys to survive in this world? Yeah, those are great questions. Well, partially we're, uh, we want to be vertically integrated because Corey's vertically challenged. He's only five feet one inch. <laughs> so, you know, we had to create a business model that allowed us to grow. And so, you know, we figured let's go with some vertical integration and all that. We all want to be as tall as you, Steve, one day, but, you know, growth hormones just don't get us there. We get bigger hair. That's about it. You know, we try to. Easy, try to- that's right, bro. That's right. We got the surfing thing down. I tried surfing with Brandon Turner. It didn't work out so well for me, so. Brandon and Tarl didn't, didn't you? I should have went to you guys to teach me, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But Brandon does okay because his beard is flotation device. So, you That's know, right. it works out. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to hang on to him for a while just to help me. Yeah, exactly. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so actually, uh, so Corey and I started in Honolulu. That's uh, We're both personal trainers by trade uh, long term, long ago, I guess. Uh, and so we all share a kind of a fitness fascination. I think, Steve, you do too as well. So that's great yep. to always travel with you and hang out in the same places. Uh, but uh, three years ago, we decided to expand. Uh, so Corey kicked me off of Oahu. And so I went up here to Seattle, uh, growing market, obviously corporate headquarters of Microsoft, Costco, Amazon, REI, you know, you just name it. They're all kind of up here. So we, uh, we had an opportunity to really expand. So we came up here, took a look around, spent some time uh, exploring how the pricing looked, how did the market look, how did the uh, economy look up here, and everything was really strong. So again, three years ago, right, pre-pandemic, um, BC before COVID. And so we got started. We uh, started a general contracting company. So that way we could do some fix and flips, purchased a couple of properties, uh, got into the million dollar space right away in an area called Mercer Island where the Seahawks tend to live. So that was great. That's a million dollar type product. Uh, It was really exciting. Uh, But then we also decided it was a good opportunity for us to really take a look at the brokerage side. And so we really thought that that would be a great opportunity for us to start finding more deals that way, uh, off market, on market, uh, give us an access to a lot of a, a larger network. And so we started a real estate brokerage firm uh, called Integris. It's a real boutique-ish type. Uh, it's for investors, by investors is our tagline. It sound cool. Uh, but we are all investors on the team. We all flip, we all own properties. And so uh, it turned out to be great because now we partner with investors who are just getting started and they're looking for their first uh, flip. They're looking for their first burr uh, or they're looking to sell something that they just rehab. So that's where we come in. Uh, And then of course the construction company was a real great asset to some of those investors because then we would come in, help them develop their scope of work, help them really realistically decide what it would cost to get the job done. Uh, because we all know wholesalers who are like, oh yeah, you know, buy this off of me for two hundred thousand rehab, a dollar fifty, and you can be on market for two million dollars. Great. And so, right, a newbie investor is like, sign me up. That's awesome. And yeah. then they buy the property, and they're like, oh, it's a teardown, and it's on non-developable land, and rehab's about five million, and they're just like, what? What happened here? Yeah. So that really helped us out with the general contracting side. Really have an eye for uh, exactly what needed to get done and create the scope of work. Uh, And then we created the property management company because of the fact that so many of our investors were saying, hey, we don't have a great property management company and property managers, including the property managers that Corey and I have worked with, uh, always have a different mindset. You know, so property managers and Steve, you know, this as well, is that they get compensated off of uh, lease ups and um, renewals and that type of thing. So we created a, a, a property management investor focused company that just does a flat fee across the board, no lease up. Uh, no added fees, no hidden fees, so real straightforward. 
Uh, and right now it's just going gangbusters. I mean, we've got over a hundred and I think 120 doors right now. And we nice. just picked that up like four months ago, Steve, you're the mentor uh, behind yeah. that. Uh, so that's been awesome. So yeah, so that's basically the vertical integration, of course, the hard money side with Keiko Capital. So what's nice is we could do the hard money loan, we could do commercial, we could do residential, we could do up to, uh, we were looking at it, funding a hotel in Las Vegas, actually. So that was kind of fun. Uh, so what's nice is that uh, investors now, and so what we're working with are physicians around the country uh, who are investors and wanting to take advantage of a tax status called real estate professional status, reps. And so they come to us and we're the brokers who help them find the property. We're also the contractors who help them do the scope of work. We're also the funders who help them get their hard money and their construction funds. Then once they close on the property, our construction team does the renovations and does all the draw requests. And then once that's all completed, then we refinance it for them. Our property management company takes care of the asset. Then we rinse and repeat, and then they go buy another asset. So it's been actually a very fluid system for us. It's been very uh, challenging to say the least, but at the same time, very rewarding. What do you guys think is your best return on your vertical? Which one do you think gives you the best money? Oh, gosh. That's best money for your time. Best money for your time. Best money for the time? I would probably say general contracting, actually. General contracting. Okay. And yeah. what what about regions? Do you, do you make more money on the island or do you make more money in Seattle or more? Like, where where's where's the juice on this deal? Um. You know, it, it's changing right now because of COVID, right? Um, right. So obviously, you know, prior to that, you know, all of our markets are challenging that we're in. Um, and so, like you said earlier, uh, you know, money can be made just anywhere that you can find a really good deal and it's all on the purchase side. So you can make good money even on the flipping side. You can make it on the wholesaling side. Uh, the nice thing about general contracting is that probably in every single market across the country, people are looking for reliable, trustworthy, integrous uh, general contractors who understand how do you do rent rehabs as opposed to a full rehab, or if you're doing a full rehab, how do you make sure it hits the $2 million mark and you're not doing Home Depot tile, you know, because right. you got to do high quality. So everyone's looking for contractors like that. So that helps, you know, on the contracting side. Uh, but the hard money side also, there's good profitability. Uh, but to really answer your question, I think every market depends and now so more than ever. Uh, in our Hawaii market, and Corey can speak to this, uh, you know, I mean, they shut down flights. There is nothing yeah. coming in. So tourism is literally at a zilch. Yeah. So airplanes, I had a buddy fly out of Hawaii the other day, and they're like, it was the, the captain, the flight attendants, and me. And 400. Yeah. And like a private seats. airplane. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, it's a private airplane. You know, a guy like you is flying it. And then it's like, man, there's so much space here. And, and so the Hawaii market is going to take a real hard hit. It yeah. doesn't mean it's still a great opportunity. Uh, Corey and I have talked about some cool opportunities uh, that he could speak towards, but uh, there's still really good opportunities there. Uh, the houses that we're sitting on right now, of course, we're trying to liquidate as quickly as possible uh, in Hawaii. Uh, but yeah, it really just kind of does depend on the market. But now, Corey, so, so Corey, when, you, when you're doing these, now you're in Hawaii and you're seeing this, it, in your mind, is this opportunity that is kind of ripe? Uh, for purchasing, once you guys exit the deals you have, are prices going to go down? That you're going to be able to go in and start start getting some some better deals on pricing? Do you think? Like, I mean, it's an island, right? They're not making any more dirt. They're not making anything. So eventually, it will go back up, right? So eventually, you will if you get them at the right price point. What that is, I don't know, but it will dip and go up. And if you're sitting there, know the market, you know, what's your thoughts on that? Well. Um that's a good question. I mean, we all don't know, right? Because we all, no one can predict the market, especially in these times. It's so volatile. There's so much news going going on and sure. it's so news sensitive, right? So as soon as any good news or bad news comes out, like people tend to overreact. Sure. But uh, for us, we're, we rather just prepare for the worst and hope for the best, you know? And uh, because we have a lot of money that we're protecting, we have a lot of investors yeah. that trust us with their money. So we don't, you know, we will never let them down, especially in hard times, you know, or questionable times sure. like these. So our strategy is basically to, it's, it's business as usual, but with more urgency, I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're, you're kind so, of in the fourth quarter, you know, that you're like in the end of the fourth quarter, it's like, all right, game's going to be over. We got to, we got to score to win. So everyone's more focused probably, right? Oh yeah, Absolutely. So, I mean, we've had, you know, calls with our teams, like just so 
that everyone's on the same page. Like, hey, it's not time to panic. You know, we, right. we're, we're going to be okay. But at the same time, it's like, we need to make sure that every decision that we make is very calculated and thought out because, um, you know, one bad decision during times like these could really hurt you, right? So, or one good decision could really help you because there is a lot of opportunity and I think there will be a lot of opportunity out there. Um, I think it's gonna be real market specific, uh, basically like markets like Hawaii where it's, we rely on tourism for the economy and uh, the governor just extended this 14 day quarantine rule. Uh, if you're a visitor from the mainland coming in, you have to basically quarantine for 14 days. So who wants to spend their vacation quarantining <laughs> for 14 days? Yeah. He just extended it another month, you know, and wow. I don't understand it um, because it's basically sucking our, you know, our island dry. And, is that, uh, is that from be- other countries too? Because I know like a lot of Japanese tourists and stuff. Is that from all countries? Anybody entering the island? Anyone coming in. Yeah. Wow. Even outer islands. So if we wanted to go to the big island, we'd have to quarantine. But I think they're going to lift that ban in on the 16th. So, but there's a lot of damage that's been done from decisions that have been made from you know people in power. Sure. And uh, I I don't agree with a lot of it. Um, but I also wouldn't really want their job right now, right? Well, that's, so, you know, that, that's, that's just job. it. I mean, you, you got to, you know, you don't want to second guess because, you know, there's probably more information uh, than, than obviously we know. So you guys are in three kind of tough markets. You're in two major tourist markets, Las Vegas and Hawaii. And then yep. Seattle obviously has been, it had a major shutdown. They were one of the first ones. So yeah, you guys, now I look at that and say, okay, if we can weather the storm, we may be sitting in a great position to jump in when the opportunity is right. So, I mean, there are two ways to look at this. Um, so we've got uh, Garrett is asking a question. So if you guys have questions, make sure you put them here in the chat box because we're going to get to them. I just wanted to lay out who these guys were and why they're so famous and why Kikoa can just come in whenever he wants and just kind of <laughs> throw it out there. But um, So Garrett is asking, were you guys friends before you became business partners and how did you choose each other as real estate partners? That's that's a good question. Yeah, because the premise of that question is that you assume that we actually are friends. <laughs> a good point. So the, the drama of that is that, you know, we try to think as <laughs> we can and uh, – no, uh, yeah, no, we were we were workout partners actually in many ways, and uh, we had met through some real estate uh, networking as well. Uh, spent some time working with another investor, and so that friendship only grew as we started examining what the opportunities were in Hawaii. And so our circle of friends actually are pretty much the same circle of friends. And and in some cases, we didn't even realize that some of our influence had overlapped in so many ways. So. I would say that, you know, that old saying goes, the only ship that doesn't sail is a partnership. Uh, it's super true. Uh, it's very hard to have a partnership because there's always two chefs in the kitchen. There's two drivers in the car. Uh, and then you've got somebody like Corey, who's highly uh, energetic and very, very ambitious. and has got a lot of vision and dreams. And then yeah. you couple that with me being very similar. And then all of a sudden we've got a really dangerous, explosive combination uh, but what has worked really well for he and I is that we've really always based everything that we do on integrity, transparency, and communication. So right. no matter what, you know, we will call each other even when there's some really bad news happening on one of our properties, one of our markets, one of our clients, one of our staff, and we'll just be like, "Hey, this is what it's gonna, it's gonna, this is gonna be bad. So hold on and call me when you're ready for this." And then you know, we get on the phone and we figure it out. Uh, there are times when we try to make decisions, and honest to God, uh, and Corey can vouch for this as well as our team. In our operating agreement, uh, the way that we resolve conflict that we cannot resolve is in Hawaii, we call it junkanapo. What do you guys call on the mainland? Rock, paper, scissors. What do you call that? Rock, paper, scissors. Okay, that's <laughs> so that's what that's what we do, or we'll have to re- resort to um some extreme jujitsu moves at the ultimate um you know resolution of conflict. But um, yeah, that's what I would say. You know, I think it's really been a foundation of just trust and and really honesty, and and that's really helped because we share that. Uh, everybody we work with feels the same way. We have a coffee talk on Fridays that Steve's going to actually be a part of next Friday. Yeah. Uh, but really, that, it just, it's just so cool because we're trying to just create a culture within our real estate investing family that really is all about transparency and honesty and integrity and working together and networking and collaborating. And, and that's why, Steve, I think we've always really loved 
connecting with you is because you have that same heart. But I think if we're really honest in our industry, it's hard to find that. Um, you know, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of shadiness going on. And so if you're looking for a partner, let's go back to the question and you're looking for a good real estate partner, I, I would say uh, don't spend so much time looking at somebody who's successful. Look at somebody who's got character and that character is going to be the foundation for great success. Yeah, that that's a great point. And, you know, I talk a lot about partnerships. I, I've had my business partner since 2003. Uh, we used to joke saying it'd be harder to divorce each other than it would be our wives because we're so intertwined with finances and we know each other's passwords. And I mean, it's just, right? <laughs> and so, you know, the, but the thing is, is we always, always would put the business first. It's like, what is the right thing for the business? Not for me, not for him. What is the right thing? And when you have employees, you know, leaders eat last. And, and we always, yeah. we were, we never, ever had that conflict. And that's, I don't even think that's something you can teach someone. That's just yeah. something that's inherent in you as a leader. You become to be, you, you learn to become a better leader, but you have to have that integrated inside of you because, you know, the, like you said, partnerships are tough, man. I mean, when you're in business, there is going to be problems. That's just how, you know, you are going to have, you're going to have days that you don't want to pick up the phone. I remember having to call my business partner, tell him that one of the houses burned down during a hurricane. And, you know, you just, you get these moments that you're just like, I do not want to make this call, but yeah, it, it's always, always taking the step away. Like he and I would have our FU conversations. And then a day later we we're like, okay, I'm fine. Like, you know, I, I, let's, it's done. Move on. Let's keep going. And it was, and it was, it was never, we never carried it through. And a lot of people, they take the business side and they internalize it. And I think that's where problems start is they start or they start taking advantage, not on purpose, but they take advantage of the situation and maybe start expecting more money, expecting more time off, expecting this. And they are not living up to what they know they really should be doing. And so that's the way they kind of lash out at the partner. So it's, you're right, man. It is a it is a tough haul, man. How about you, Corey? Let's get into some marriage relationship counseling with you guys. What's your problem? Yeah. <laughs> or beyond well, help. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you said, it's like it's it, it can be challenging at times, right? To to not just be accountable for yourself, but for someone else. And uh, the the main thing I think for me is I wouldn't want to do this by myself. You know, I'll, yeah. I'd rather do this with a friend. Right. And so true, no matter what, like business, it's going to have tough times, but there's also going to be very good times, too. And we have a lot of fun, you know, yeah. and it's serious business sometimes. So, you know, you don't, you don't want to be serious all the time. Otherwise, it's going to feel like work. And I, I didn't get into this to work. You know, I and, can't, and, I well, and you know me. on top of that, when it when it comes to to business, a lot of this, you're going to spend a lot of time with each other. So if you don't like the other person, man, it's going to be hard, man. I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, you, you guys are going to be on the phone a lot. You're going to be talking. It's like, Hey, I got to make a call. I got to text you. I got this. Hey, I'm busy. Can you handle this? And it's a, a lot of it is, is the reciprocity of give and take where it's like, Hey, I got to spend time with the family, man. I got to, I got to just, I just got to disconnect for the day. Like just, just handle it. And knowing that the other partners got your back and that they will handle it. And you don't come back and be it be worse when you left it and be like, the F did you do, man? You know, and that there's a lot of trust that you have to have in each other. And that's that's very hard. I, I remember um, a friend of mine used to have a uh, he had about twelve hundred units in apartments and uh, he had about 70 partners total collectively. Wow. And he said, it's like you've <laughs> dated someone for three days and then you married them and you find out they're crazy. And they right. are just like dry. He says, it's just like, they're different people. And he said, it's just, no matter what you sign, no matter what agreement, no matter this, he's like, they just become freaking psycho calling you at 3 AM screaming at you because they're just upset about something. It's just unbelievable. So I, luckily I, and hopefully you guys haven't dealt with that, but that's a, that's a tough haul. So yeah, well, um, it's the best way to start is just to do a small joint venture together. You know, I think a lot of people are looking for team-based approaches to investing these days. And, yeah. and I think that's where Corey and I, we got really lucky early on is that we had an opportunity to kind of partner on some things, work on some projects together. We got to know each other's style. Um, you know, his, his, is, he's more the numbers guy. He looks at a project and he says, you know, let's leave everything as is and let's just replace and I come in and I've got the the flair. I'm like, we're gonna take down a wall and we're gonna go with this kind of backsplash and we're gonna go with this kind of lighting. And he's like, that's just too much. We gotta go with this. And I, and that's where we arm wrestle. But yeah. it helped us to see early on that that our complementary qualities 
we're pretty strong. Yeah. And so I would say that anybody's looking for a partner uh, is to just do a small JV first and then kind of, you know, date them for a while. Uh, you yeah. know, we don't oftentimes get married to the first person that we hang out with most of the time. Uh, some of us went crazy, but uh, you know, I, I married my, um, my gal after we got married six months after we got going. So yeah, it was pretty fast, but you know, wow. but Corey, I just got to speak to Corey, just to your point, uh, Steve, about having somebody you can trust. I think that's probably the most important ingredient. Early this year, I was in the hospital just with some liver issues from yeah. uh, overdosing on bodybuilding supplements. Not a good idea, parenthetically speaking, but it was so cool. Corey just, you know, I, I basically was like, Hey, I'm in the hospital. Like, like the baton's yours. We have got this many properties in Seattle. We got this going on in Vegas. We got this real estate brokerage going. We got this going on. Here's your download. Good luck. God bless. I'll catch you in a month. And yeah. he's like, get better. And I will catch you later. And I'll try not to burn anything up. And it was awesome. Like, I mean, it's, it's been just amazing to have somebody like that. So, yeah. So I hope that for everybody who's looking for a good partner. Yeah, I, I agree. And, Go ahead, Corey. I, oh yeah, I just that I think that's what the like if you're going to go into a long term partnership like Kikwan and I have been in, and there's a lot of money on the line and it's serious business. Like you, you need to trust the person, and you never really know the what the person's true heart or how what they have inside until things start to go bad or there's yeah. serious issues, right? So um, that's when you start to see people's true colors. Do they do they panic? Or do they rise to the occasion, right? And it's, I mean, it, it's gone both ways because, you know, Kiko will score touchdowns, I score touchdowns, and no one's keeping score. We just push forward. You know, we, we're, we're, we're playing to win. And um, when, uh, yeah, when, when you know, I, I have a story for uh, to talk about Kiko as my partner. So I think a year ago, uh, we got into this, we had a really good deal. It's a development deal, which we're almost going to be hitting market soon. It's six houses out in Makaha. And I had, I had the opportunity to basically wholesale the deal and, you know, we would both, you know, make about hundred grand, right? So it's a big wholesale deal, had everything lined up and I just couldn't let it go because the project was so good and, you know, we could net a million dollars, you know, but it would take us maybe a year and a half, two years and it's a development deal. So it's risky, right? So we're like, do we take the money now? Like, you know, a nice chunk of change now or, you know, and then, so I just decided that's like, you know, I'm going to, I, I think we, I believe in our us, you know, we're going to do this. And so I decided um, to, that we're going to do the deal and not to take the the big wholesale fee. So I called Keiko. I was like, Hey, I was like, brah, um, I just want to let you know, uh, we're, we're not, you know, we have a chance to make like, you know, a lot of money right now, but we're, we're not, not going to, <laughs> you, know, you know, we could make a, a hundred grand right now or, you know, or, you know, kind of pass on it, right? Kick, kick it down the road and try to see if we can score big, right? And and he is like, sounds like fun, you know? <laughs> so, so I told him, not only are we passing up on, you know, six-figure wholesale uh, deal right now, but we have to bring to the table about like a million five, you know, to, to do this deal. So not only are we not taking money, we have to come up with a one and a half million, you know, one million dollars. And he was like, oh, sounds like fun. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's the kind of partner you need. You yeah, need, it's the it's the thrill need. of the hunt, you know. And, and and you're right, man. Like when you're going into battle, that's 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 not the time that you want to see how your partner handles it. You've got to know beforehand that here that they're going to handle it correctly. And uh, yeah, that's that's a great point. I almost bought a condo in Makaha back in 2000 when I was living in Guam, actually, but it was too long of a flight for me to go back and forth uh, to have. But wow. anyway, it's cheap back then. I know it was cheap. I won't even tell you how much it was back then. I'll date myself. Um, all right. So we've got um, Alex. Alex, a uh, good friend of ours, actually. He was at the Mastermind with Brandon and Tarl. Uh, Alex, hope you're doing good, buddy. Um, so what price points are entry-level first-time homebuyer condos and single families going for in Maui? Uh, how many flips are happening at those prices monthly on that island? Uh, I'd say for single family and condos, I can't really speak confidently on Maui because it's a different island. So it's a different, it's slightly different numbers, but I think Oahu is around like the mid fours or fives for condos. And then, uh, or entry level is lower than that. That's like the median around there. Uh, median for single family is I think high sevens right now. Although it's gone up ironically in, in these times, the, the prices have actually gone up, 
but the, the transactions have gone significantly lower. It was 50% less transactions um, this past quarter or this past month or quarter. Yeah. Because um, the inventory is so low. So, you know, there's um, sure the, the prices are going up and I, I think it, it, we just have to be careful because I think this is happening nationwide and uh, we just have to be careful because it could be um, a trap in my opinion. Right. Cause we don't really know uh, until we get the, the real unemployment numbers that are coming out and you know, what really happens when we're all opened up again and everything's functioning. Right. So it just, I'd say just keep, be careful if you're, if you're going into deals right now and just, Prepare for the worst, you know, and be very conservative. I would yeah. just add, if Alex is asking specifically about Maui, which just tells me that he has an interest in possibly investing on Maui. So if that is the case, Alex, uh, one, hit us up. Uh, Corey and I would be happy to kind of talk you through that. The other thing is that we have some really good friends on Maui. Um, so obviously Brandon Turner's on Maui and uh, they're doing some really good things. Greg Caudette is his uh, partner. And so if you're looking at doing something on Maui, I'd say, let's introduce you to those guys. They will completely give you all the scoops. And they have some pretty good, actually, off-market wholesale deals for some condos. I think it was in the Kihei and Kaanapali area. So uh, let us know. We'd be happy to help, help you out. Yeah, you can always right. uh, you can always um, walk Ryan's new bird around the park if you have to. His parrot that he – have you guys seen his parrot or whatever he has that he's been nestling back to health, Ryan Murdoch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so we got here. Um, Evolve twenty three is saying, are there different tax benefits or disadvantages investing with other partners? How do you manage difficult partners? So, do you guys have other partners that you bring in on deals? Uh, I'm assuming that you guys do on different stuff, right? We do. Uh, I'll I'll let Corey answer the second half of that. I think the first part of it is that we do bring in partners, uh, largely because we our heart. I think. Well, so first of all, Corey and I passed the mark of doing real estate for money. We now do real estate investing because we love the network. We love helping other people and we love investing in other people. And so a big part of us bringing in people to partner with us on flips or deals is whether they're a private money lender or if they're actually an investor or if they're actually a physical partner, like they're actually going to be in the field helping pick out uh, finishes and do that type of thing. It's always based on not only what can we get from them, but what can we give to them? Uh, yeah. Obviously, we always are very interested in what value does someone bring to us. And we talk a lot about that is that if you're a brand new investor and you want to partner with somebody, uh, don't just be like, hey, I want to get mentored. I mean, that's that's cool, but we don't know what that means. But right. if you come and you say, hey, you know what? I've done a couple flips. I've watched a ton of bigger pocket podcasts. I follow Steve and, and I think I know a couple things and here's what I can bring. I'd love to try to partner with you guys. Then I think sometimes those investors would say, hey, you know what? There's a place that you could fit in. Uh, that's really been for Corey and I is we find opportunities in every deal we have to bring in other people. We could do it ourselves now and we use OPM all the time, other people's money. Uh, so we don't have to bring in other people. And to be totally truthful, sometimes it's harder when you bring in another partner in the operating yeah. agreement who's new to the mix. Uh, because it's one thing to, you know, deal with Corey, just, you know, give that a shot one day and you'll just discover <laughs> it. You know? that's, that's, that's entertaining enough. And then you got to deal with me. You know, then you got to add another person to that. And you're just like, man, now we've got way too many opinions. Uh, but we find that the value of doing that has been very rewarding. Uh, so the answer is yes, we do. Uh, and Corey, you want to talk about how we structure those partnerships? Well, yeah. So since we are vertically integrated, right, um, we have multiple companies across the real estate spectrum. Um, we we have to partner, right? We have to leverage other people's efforts and um, performance, so we have multiple partners um, in, in all the different companies. And it's always, it's when we go into a partnership, it's always kind of like a feel, right? There's no real sense to it. Like we can look at someone's maybe resume or Instagram or Facebook and, and you know, try to do as much due diligence. I mean, that to me, we make a decision to go into partnership basic, based off, basic, Basically, do we like the person? Yeah, right? yeah. Based on the person, we work together. If I feel like we're going going to have hard times, like, are you going to be able to keep up, right? And are we the same kind of high performance players, right? Because we we want to hold ourselves to that standard, right. um, all the way down to you know anyone on our team, even people who aren't on our team, but we're you know are just uh, friend investors or colleagues. We want to lift them up. We want to lift each other, hold each other accountable. Um, so I think for us, it's 
it, we haven't had problems with partners so far that we've worked with. Um, and I think it's because uh, when we go into a partnership, we're really careful about do we can do we know, like, and trust this person? Right. right? And it's just a feeling that we, we get inside. It's been working out great, to be honest. And um, I see a second question is uh, how do we manage difficult partners? Yeah. Um, I think everybody can be difficult, right? So uh, Depends I think, on the day, right? Right. And, and being a true leader, you have to know how to manage, you know, different personalities in different situations. But I think the main thing is putting others first, right? Like how you said, leaders eat last and, and, and not really instructing or, or expecting anyone to do something that Keiko and I wouldn't do ourselves or haven't done ourselves already. Yeah. Right. So I, I think, yeah, if you have those partnerships, it'll work out long-term. I think the biggest challenge when it comes to a difficult partner is a lot of times it's like when people select a tenant, right? They're nice. This is going to be great. You're going to love living here. We're going to be good friends. And then all of a sudden they're calling and you're like, oh my God, this guy will not stop calling me because you <laughs> set the wrong expectation in the beginning. And the same thing with partnerships. People do not set proper expectations. And so one business partner goes into the partnership thinking, I'm just giving these guys money. I'm not doing anything. And you guys are thinking, okay, th we got a 50, 50 partner. Yeah. He's giving us money. We don't need money. We expect him to carry his weight and nobody ever actually has that discussion. So then you're in the partnership and the guy's like, wait a second, I gave you money. And you guys are like, and we didn't, we don't need your money. We needed someone to do some, do some work. Yeah. And it's, Nobody having that expectation conversation in the beginning. It's almost like you got to air the dirty laundry. This is like, I always say like, this is best case scenario. This is worst case scenario. We're probably going to be somewhere in between. Yeah. This is the time. This is the money. Best case, worst case. This is like, are we all cool with this? Do we know what we're walking into? It, you know, it, yes, we're hoping for the best doesn't mean it's going to happen, right? We all know shit happens and we're going to be dealing with stuff that, that goes on that are out of our control. You know, Kakoa goes in the hospital for a month. Who's yeah. dealing with it? You know, Corey could have been like, well, I want a bigger chunk of the deal then. I'm doing more work. That's yeah. obviously not a partnership then. You know what I mean? That, that's not how partnerships work. So um, the, I think at some point, in my opinion, you know, I was always taught like you've got to create something in the agreement that you could pull the rip cord and be like, Hey, you know what? This just isn't working. We have to exit you, or I'm going to exit. This is how the assets are going to be split. But you know, whenever people come to me and talk to me about a partnership, the first thing I ask them is, have you talked about the divorce? Have yeah. you talked about what happens when you break up? And they're like, Oh no, like we don't want to talk about that. We, we grew up together. We're yeah. friends. We're like, friends forever. We've been friends forever. We're cousins. Like we're cousins. That's not going to happen. I'm like, yeah. that's exactly why you have to have that discussion because right. that is why if they have a problem now when times are good, what's going to happen when you guys are a hundred grand in the hole and they got to pop up 75 grand to fix something. And they're going to be like, I ain't paying that. You never told me that. And now it, now it just goes from bad to nuclear. And you know what I mean? It's just, you could save your friendship by doing it now. If they say, Hey, I'm not prepared to do that. Then you may say, okay, well, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't be partners. Like maybe this just isn't a good deal then or a good idea. So that, yeah. that to me is you, you deal with difficult partners. Like you deal with difficult tenants, you evict them before you select them. You have such a good selection process or at least a conversation yeah. before you even bring them on board so that everyone's clear. So they can't say, you didn't tell me. That, that's just my opinion, at least. For Well, I think that's huge. And then the other piece of that that's important is that sometimes what you were saying earlier is that because we're best friends, let's do handshake and we're good to go. In Hawaii, you know, it's just like, yeah, you know, we, we friends, bro. We're good. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I always say that because we're friends, we're going to put it all in writing. And we're going to have everything, including exit strategy, because you're 100% you're right. Every, every relationship is human. Every human's flawed. Every flawed human is selfish. And every selfish person is going to make a bad decision. And that's who your partner is, you know? Well, and, and, you know, on top of that, what a lot of people don't think about is what about the spouse, right? Yeah. Let, let's say something happens to you. Now your partners, maybe the contract is such that now your partner's with the person's spouse. And now all of a sudden she hates real estate and she hates you. Yeah. And now how do you deal with that? So a lot of people don't think about, you know, a, one of the things I tell people is you need to do an alignment 
with everybody involved and everyone's spouses at least once a year. Hey, this is where we're going. This is what we did last year. This is where we're going. This is where we're going next year. This is the plan. Is everybody on board? Yeah, you're not like, you know what I mean? Because yeah. if all this team may pop up and be like, hey, I, I have to hate you guys. You're taking my husband, all my time, all this and that. It's like, okay, well then let's clear it up now before, you know, because again, now you're like, what we used to do is we had a, a life insurance policies on each other. So if yeah. something happened, you know, we could buy each other out, you know, so that the spouse would get paid off and then we were done kind of, but that was just something to have a pull the rip cord kind of thing. So yeah. that's just, that's you know, my... Yeah. Well, I'm lucky because Corey's not married yet, so there's not too much competition <laughs> on that side. But we are trying to find him a good girl, so you know. So you guys are part of the you're part of the dating process, right? Like third date is with Coco to have a conversation, see if he likes you, he can work with you. That that's the best way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so Coco, someone's asking here. Web affiliate 2020 is saying, what other opportunities on Oahu do you see, or are you open to? Oh, that's a great question. And especially in COVID and about to have an economic uh, recession, if you will, on Oahu and just all the changes that's happening because tourism is literally out the door at this point. Uh, it's been really interesting. Corey's come up with some pretty cool plans if you want to talk about those. Yeah. So, um, you know, initially we saw opportunity in the uh, short term vacation rental space because um, a lot of these guys are getting crushed you know, out yep. there right now. And they're, some of them bought multiple properties. They leveraged it because they were banking on the short term, um, you know, uh, vacation rental income, which was going great, you know, up until a couple of months ago. And then all of a sudden, you know, it all disappeared. Right. But they still have to pay the mortgage. They still got to pay the HOA fees or maintenance fees. So some of them are bleeding pretty heavy right now. Um, so we've been targeting, targeting that market to see if there's people to help, because that's really what we provide, right? We provide, um, solutions to people who are in distressed situations, right? Like, so there are a lot of people distressed in, in those condo tells or, you know, short-term vacation rental zoned areas. And so we were going to, you know, we're going after them to see if we can help to either buy it straight cash to either wholesale or flip um ourselves or you know if it, i think we're a little early because the fallout hasn't you know started yet um and hopefully it doesn't actually you know i'm kind of hoping it doesn't i don't want people to get hurt in this but if you know people are getting hurt you know we're, we're, we we want to provide that solution but we're a little early so we were thinking about structuring some sort of lease option agreement with the sellers to kind of uh, control the property under a lease option contract, right? So we still have equitable interest in that property, um, but we don't have to put up the hundreds of thousands of dollars to close close on it, right? Um, so we can control it with a lease option contract um, with the agreement to sublease the property as short-term vacation rental um, until the market comes back and then we can cash flow and um and still have the option to purchase at the agreed upon price within maybe two to three years right because boeing ceo came out and said that they don't expect the airline industry to be back to full capacity or you know occupy you know operating at the the capacity it was for three to five years mm -hmm. so what that tells me is that the airline industry is going to take a while you know there's a lot of jobs that are going to be lost there there's going to be a lot of jobs that are not going to come back in the hospitality space and restaurants so I hope not, but we're preparing for it, preparing for the opportunity and also preparing, you know, ourselves that, okay, what is this going to do to our business? Right. Yeah. Well, I think that what, what people, you know, to me, at least the short term rental, and I, I don't own any short term rentals, but it, it's almost like the concept and idea is there and it works, but this is showing a weakness in the business model. It's like a kryptonite that nobody really thought of. Yes. This could be the thousand year flood, whatever you want to call it, but it still exists, right? The house still flooded. So whatever you want to call it, it is a flaw in the business model of short term rentals and maybe just having an exit that I, you know, and again, from what I understand and know of them, I know a lot of people were paying a little bit more because they were buying them based on what the cash flows would give them. So they were willing to pay more money for the rentals or arbitrage them for more because they were saying, hey, you know what? I'll make it up on the backside. No big deal. And 
obviously no one ever thought of this. And these are the first people that are kind of crossing the Rockies, the frontier people that now they're kind of going, holy shit, it's cold in these mountains. We may not make it. Someone else coming is going to say, hey, we better bring a jacket next time because it's freaking cold up there. So I think what we're seeing is that maybe you need to have multiple exit strategies when you do own a short-term rental to say, okay, this is plan A, this is plan B, this is plan C. Like we've got different exits to get out of here. Um, what can you just, uh, for, for people to understand, can you explain what a lease option is so that people understand that? Oh, right. Yeah. So a lease option basically is you're signing a lease contract, just like you would, um, with, you know, any landlord, if you're renting, um, but you also have an option agreement to purchase the property and that those terms can be, um, basically given, you know, a certain amount of years or months you have the right to purchase the property at the agreed upon price at the time of that you sign the contract. Right. So right. our hopes or like what our thoughts were, okay, maybe the, it's not um, right. We're too early to buy right now. Right. Right. And, uh, but we can control the property until the market comes back and then um, get some appreciation, get some cash flow. And once the market comes back, you know, and, you know, the option to buy, you know, at that price makes it profitable for us to actually buy it and then, you know, either resell it or hold it, then we will execute that op that option to buy. But it's an option to buy. So we're not obligated to. Right. So if the market comes back or if it doesn't come back and this thing drags out and it gets worse and all we're getting is, you know, we're paying the lease and the, you know, any other fees for that, then um, we don't have to buy. Right. So we're not committed to buy but we have the option to if yeah it, it, it's a great it. it really is a great scenario now i know in texas there's a certain time frame that if you lease option for a certain amount they actually that that flips over to rights to the property that they you actually have to foreclose on the person you know is that the case in in hawaii or can you lease option it for years and years and years and and they don't get They've got an equitable interest, but they don't get ownership rights. Is that is that why you don't have a time limit? Um, no. Well, so I actually never heard of that in Texas. Oh, so. You may want to look it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, but no. So if that's the case, then yeah, I mean that's probably something we got to look into. But I don't think so. I mean, with for us, uh, and for us, it's always short term. Like we don't really right. want to control someone's property for for too long. Um, but our our idea was to get in and and out. Yeah. And, and I guess another way to do it would, if you wanted to do like a subject to where you actually take over the mortgage of someone, you know, subject to the existing mortgage that's there. Um, do you guys ever do those out there where, I mean, it seems like somebody would be primed to do that where you're just taking it over. Is that, is that common in, in Hawaii? Yeah. And uh, the first deal that I, actually the first couple of deals I ever did was a subject to deal. Um, yeah. And I, I, I learned uh, from a, a friend of ours who's a, like a mentor to us. And um, he so watching how he, you know, structured the subject too was perfect because it was a win-win for everybody, you know, the, the owner. And so yeah. it even more is confirmation to me about how powerful some of these strategies are. You know, we're here to provide solutions. So we're not here to just pay cash. And if it doesn't fit that criteria, then we're out. You know, we look at all different avenues before we pass up on a deal. Um, you know, because most likely there's something there that we can help, you know, we can structure the deal in some way to help the, the homeowner. Yeah. I, I think it's important for people to realize too, that the misconception is, is that, you know, if you get a property for a low amount or you're doing it subject to the people like the, the people that are not in real estate think like, Oh, you're taking advantage of that person. But let me tell you, when you're on the other side of that coin, like I've been before where you have these, just these pig properties that are just they're killing you inside and you can't sleep at night and you don't know how to get rid of this thing. You will do anything to make this problem go away. So it, it like when you think of like some people are like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want like I, I'm taking advantage of the owner. Let me tell you something. When you're solving a problem and like you, you said it perfectly, you're coming up with a solution to their problem. You're not hypnotizing them and making them go and sign the paperwork you're giving them a solution to a problem. And unless you've walked that walk and you've walked in those shoes to where you are dealing and you're going like, I don't know how to get out of this. And someone says like, Hey, I'll take it off your hands. Give me a year or two. Let me see if I can get rid of it. If not, you may be in a better position. You can take it back. You're like, you know what deal? 
I don't care. Take it. You know, so I think it's important for people to realize all of these things that are out there, all these. Now, of course, there are the people that take advantage. They're the people that do the wrong things. But that's not the majority. The majority are solving a problem by creatively coming up with a solution that works for everyone. And it's not the standard, but it works. And, yeah. and like you guys said, like right now, this is a perfect example of coming up with things. Planes not coming into the islands is a problem. You know, it's a problem for everybody, especially people that have short term rentals. So how do you fix it? You fix it by going, you know what, let's throw it all on the table and let's come up with something that works for you, works for us. And then let's kick it a, a month, a, a year down the road, and then let's come up with some solutions. So um, well, it's not even short term rentals. It's also on the hotel side. Corey and I are working on a deal right now for a hotel outer island that they need to sell it. So, uh, you know, I have told Corey many times we want to buy a hotel. So uh, there's opportunities all the way across the board. Uh, people, I think that's a beautiful thing about real estate investing is that we're problem solvers. Uh, whether you're a broker trying to help someone find their first home or you're an investor looking to wholesale out a deal and working with a motivated seller, um, or you're on the hard money lending side and you've got a client like we do oftentimes who are like, hey, here's a property I have. I've got no experience. I need a loan. It's a deal. What's the solution? And so I think that's why we love the industry so much is because we get to be problem solvers. And I think the problem solvers are the ones who are going to come through COVID-19 the best because we're not hiding in fear. We're looking at it straight on and saying, hey, there's opportunity here through every challenge is an opportunity. And this one is going to be a big one. And I mean, Hawaii's getting hit hard. Uh, Vegas, same thing. We've got we just finished one of our flips down in Vegas and we put it on market. And I mean, what a terrible time to go on market middle of COVID. Right. You, you can't even go and look at houses. And all the Vegas Strip is closed down and, you know, all the money's gone, no conventions coming in. I mean, it's as bad as Hawaii, but but there's going to be opportunities. And so uh, we're excited about that. So let's let's talk. Tell me a little bit about Vegas. Tell me what's tell me what what what, what are your plans in Vegas? Because I know you guys are, you know, really doubling down there. So tell me what you guys are doing. Yeah, so Vegas is you know one of those unique markets. It's the ninth island of Hawaii. So we have actually, Corey and I have a lot of family and friends that live in Vegas. So what's nice about building teams, I think someone had asked the question of how do you transfer management and construction business over to other states and still maintain quality control? And a big part of that is, is a big piece of knowing who the team is that you're going to build. Uh, Steve, you you invest in multiple states. You've got business going on in other countries. You know, I mean, it's exciting. And we're the same way. We're just trying to figure out what relationships do we have? Uh, how do we, like you said, evict them before we hire them or evict them before we partner them? And then look at those opportunities. Vegas, obviously, uh, is going to be like Hawaii. It's going to be it's going to be hard hit here for a short season. Uh, but Vegas, as we all know, the price point after the subprime collapse never rebounded to the same level that it had done prior to the subprime in Vegas. Hawaii right. was opposite. We far exceeded it. Seattle far exceeded the subprime. So Vegas, just for whatever reason, was always repressed. And so going into COVID is going to make it even more challenging again. Uh, I think Vegas does have some really good opportunities, though, because uh, the fact is, is that it is not like Hawaii that's land land um, unaccessible. Like you have to fly right. there. Vegas right. Vegas right now, from what I hear from folks, is that they're giving conventions away. So if anybody wants to do a convention, Steve, we should do a convention. Let's like, do it, man. Away, they're giving I'm away down. Let's go. Right now. They're giving away <laughs> hotel rooms. Like, they're doing everything they can to get businesses back. So yeah. what that tells me is when corporate is motivated to bring revenue back into the city, that's great. And for Vegas, I mean, there's so many ballrooms to fill. Uh, but people can access it. You know, they don't have to get on a plane, which is going to be tough for a while uh, for Hawaii. And then people are just scared, right, to get on a plane because of masks and COVID and coughing on others. But to get in a car and do a convention that's got social distancing, I think we're going to see a lot more of that happening. Uh, and then what's really weird about human nature is that we still love to have fun no matter how hard things get. And people love to gamble. So, you know, that's going to be an interesting industry. We like the multifamilies out there. Uh, Corey and I took a look at one over there that was $80,000 for a duplex. We're like, we can't even buy a parking stall on Oahu for $80,000. <laughs> so, it's, um, it's crazy, though. It's crazy, the, the different markets. Now, let me ask you this. Are you guys uh, thinking of any other markets? 
Yeah, we're, we always think every market. We specific, we, Corey and I like to think of markets that we don't mind going to a vacation on or uh, like meeting up at. So Corey and I, sometimes we don't meet in Hawaii. We have an office in Hawaii. So for a long time, I was going there every other week. And then we're like, man, we like Beverly Hills. Let's meet in Beverly Hills. Man, we like Arizona. Let's go there. Uh, but we are looking at a number of different markets. One of the new things we're exploring is something called the adult family home space. So with the retiring baby boomer generation, there's an opportunity where obviously COVID started here in Seattle at a big nursing home. So suddenly now all the seniors are like, we don't like nursing homes. But there's this new, uh, not new, uh, it's, uh, there's a group out of uh, Phoenix, I think, that really kind of got that going a couple of years yeah. ago pretty strong. Uh, and so we're just kind of moving into that space now. We've got our first adult family home that will be opening up here in four weeks. So that's pretty exciting. We've got 10 bedrooms. Uh, and so what's interesting about that space is that it's like McDonald's. If you ever watch the McDonald's movie, uh, they say we're not in the burger business, we're in the real estate business. So yep. they own all of the real estate and then some franchisor runs the McDonald's. So same with us, you know, we're looking across the country right now and saying, hey, where else do we have aging seniors? And the answer to that is every single county across the country. And where do seniors need to go into these adult family home living situations? And that's majority of the seniors. And now they don't want to go into these big boxes. So Corey and I are examining the opportunity for us to buy ramblers across the country, find operators, lease it to them at three times market rent, uh, and then be able to build a syndication portfolio, if you will, of real estate assets just in every single state across the country. Uh, so that's really our next venture. Uh, so to answer your question, we're looking at really every single market. We have a couple markets that we've been approached to help mentor, coach, and consult on recreating the vertical integration that we have. So we have some um, some entrepreneurs that feel like they got the bandwidth to run the brokerage, hard money, lending, plus the general contracting, plus the property management. Uh, so we'll probably be involved in quite a bit of that across the country as well, which is exciting uh, because I think there's a good opportunity there to serve people well. Um, but, but yeah, we're open to almost every single market. You know, Steve, we're waiting for you to invite us to the dance. I know you don't like us that much. That's why you never asked us to partner with you, but, but I love it. You know, it's funny. I actually know those guys in Phoenix that, that do the, uh, the retirement, the, the elderly. I, I know them. I, yeah. I've spoken with them at conferences before and I started talking to them. So, but, um, I, I gotta say, man, you guys, you guys are, uh, you guys are an inspiration, man. You really are. You guys are, you guys are out there doing it. I mean, you guys are showing people that not only can you be partners, you can be friends at some level, uh, but you can be partners in different states, right? I mean, you, you basically kicked Kokoa out, told him go to Seattle. He went there. He's killing it. Now you guys are in Vegas. And, and I got to say, man, it's, it's very, very impressive seeing everything that you guys are doing and giving back to the community as, you know, I know as much as you do. I mean, you know, you and I, we've all met at, at Tarl's event up in Seattle we became friends. We've known each other since then. And you're right. There, there's not many people that you can get along with and hang out and be so like-minded that we can, you know, be be hanging out, drinking or, or eating lunch or whatever. And just everyone's just getting along, like no hidden agendas. Yeah. And, and it's always nice to have genuine people like that um, to be able to meet those kinds of people. And nobody's ever talking, you know, anything money or what they make or whatever. Everyone's just talking about how to help each other. And that's what I noticed is the difference about people that are true, you know, champions in whatever they do is they're always looking to make it about you instead of making it about themselves. You know what I mean? I, I, I try to give back. I do do this and other stuff with trying to help bigger pockets and be a part of it. And to me, it's just something that you want to give back because you want to give to people. And, and that's kind of what I think all of us want to do at some point, because I don't think any of us, I don't think any people that are out there at this, at a level like us and even higher I don't think we do it just for the money, right? I, I don't think money is the driving factor to why we get up and do what we do. We do it because we love doing it. We like helping people. We like being a part of what we're creating. And like you said, you guys have people asking you. I get a, I get a few people every now and then that ask me for some help and I help them out a little with some stuff and some advice, but you know, yeah. uh, not as much as you guys probably, no, but I do my best. Steve, you're, 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 there's, this, there's an old uh, business saying, right? That you attract who you are. Yeah. And uh, Steve, you're, you've been, from the first time we met you, man, I mean, we've always been inspired because you gave everything away. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to reveal this and so you can cut me off at some point, but when we were looking at starting the property management company, nobody wants to do a property management company. Everybody hates their property managers, but you were the one shining light in that space. And every conference I went to, I'm like, that guy is amazing. One, his biceps are bigger than my head. <laughs> Number two, 
is as energetic as I am. So it's got to be coffee. And then number three, like he just is passionate about this property management space. And I remember reaching out to you and we both share a love for sushi. So yeah, you know, we, right. we go to the gym and then we eat all the carbs we can. So we go back to the gym. So <laughs> yeah. you and I, we had the most amazing sushi lunch. Like I think we devoured all the fish in the restaurant. Yeah, uh, but man, not a single time did you tell the story about how you made money, but you kept telling stories of how I'm going to give you this and this spreadsheet. I'm going to put you in touch with my guy. I'm going to put you in touch with my yeah. VA, and I'm going to put you in touch with this, and I'm going to download a bunch of stuff for you here. And I mean, by the time we were done, I was like, why would we not start up this company? Like we were just given all the tools to the kingdom, yeah. and the guy never asked for a dime. He never really asked us if we, you know, could could help him in any way. And so, so Steve, I just want to share, you know, while everyone else is listening that you're, you're the real deal and you are the generous go-giver. Uh, you've got an abundant mindset, which we love. And, and that's why you attract the people you do. I always think it's funny when people are like, everyone's around, everyone around me is selfish and they're all, you know, self-centered. I'm like, well, bro, look at yourself. Like that's who you're attracting, you know? Uh, yeah. And so really that's been amazing to be a part of what you're doing. And, and I would encourage that to turn it to everybody else in the, in the group here on this uh, live chat is, is just be that, be who you want to attract and, and do what you want to have done to you, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, and you were just so generous, Steve, that that just inspired us. Like we give everything away. Uh, Corey and I, like there's, there's no secrets with us. When somebody asks for our deal analysis spreadsheet, we're like, yeah, you know, we probably invested a hundred grand into the learning to kind of create this spreadsheet. Yours for free. Go for yeah. it. Have fun. And yeah. they're like, well, how do you get the deals? Like, what do you, what software do you use? We're like, here's our password, log in, check it out, see what you think, you know? Yeah. And, and what's really fun about that is that I think there's so much real estate to be done that we get to do it and every single one of us rises with the tide and Absolutely. we get to look across and we see a bunch of other people successful. And, and that just makes Corey and I just super excited to be in our space. Um, but the opposite is also true. And I know I'm talking a lot because I had like three coffees today. But um, the opposite is true, too, is that there's challenging times in real estate. Like Corey and I have some really hard conversations and we've lost money on deals. We've, we've bashed our heads against a wall trying to problem solve some stuff. But what we know is that we've got people like you, Steve, and others that are in this, this community that's been created that we can call up and be like, hey, we need to think this through. And, and we got guys like you that, that are around us that are like, hey, we're going to figure this out. I will fly there and we'll figure this out. Uh, and that's the same thing we want to replicate because, you know, you showed that to us and we want to do the same for others. Yeah. Well, and I don't know what to go do. from there, man. I don't know what to say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think like at the end of this, like when we're done, you know, and Kiko and I, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever be done because because we, we live for this. Right. But uh, I think at the end of it, I think what our legacy is going to be is exactly that is helping others, you know, and, and that's why we're, we, you have the same heart that we're going for, you know? And so I don't think it's coincidence that we we've met, you know, at, at Tara's event and, and became real good friends, you know? So, um, and everybody listening here, we'd love to be able to help continue to help them and serve them in any way that we can, because honestly, when you do give first without any expectations of any return, that is really how you become successful. And really, we talk about social capital and basically like your network is more powerful than a do than, than the dollar. You know what I mean? Because like Eko said is if if something was to if we were to lose everything today, you know, we'd be fine because of the great people that we've surrounded ourselves with. They will not let us fail, you know, and of course, it's our responsibility not to put it on anybody else but ourselves because we're responsible to a lot of people. But if the worst case scenario was to happen, people has our have our backs, just like how we have theirs. You know, we've come to their aid when they need it, right? So social capital is probably the most val it's most valuable thing in business, to be honest. Well said, guys. Well said. Well, listen, I think we went a couple minutes over. So um, if they want to get a hold of you and, and learn more about your stuff, how, what, what website do they go to if they want to find you guys? <laughs> we have too many websites. <laughs> um, join, us <laughs> join us tomorrow at 1 o'clock Pacific time, 10 a.m. Hawaii time, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, coffee talk is what we're about. Uh, they can cool. go onto our Facebook page to look up the actual login for the zoom. It's uh, Keiko exchange, uh, on Facebook. 
just Keiko Exchange, K-E-C-O Exchange. That's uh, my first letters and Corey's first letters. That was as creative as we got naming our company. <laughs> awesome. well, well, guys, thank you so much, man. I know everybody gets a, you know, I'm sure there's been a ton of information that I'll probably go back and rewatch and hopefully everyone can share this out um, and bigger pockets. You know, obviously we, we all love giving back and this is just a great platform to do it. So for those of you watching, you know, go to biggerpockets.com. Tons of forums, educations. I mean, that, that's kind of all of us. It's in our DNA, um, and it should be in yours, too, because this is how you learn, and really, this is how you get better. Um, I, I've never met anybody who was successful and didn't give back that wasn't happy. So you really got to think about that when you're climbing the success ladder of are you giving back and are you helping out? And the most people that you find that are actually fundamentally happy with who they are, I would say probably all of them give back, and they give something. So um, – Anyways, guys, it's been a pleasure as always. I'm gonna, I, I love talking with you guys and hanging out. We'll have to do a recap and see where you guys are in a couple months and do this again, man. Absolutely. And then we're excited to have you on our Coffee Talk next Friday. So uh, That's right. I'll be on we'll Coffee be- Talk. We'll, we'll, we'll do another round, man. Let's, on, I, actually, I'll be in Brazil when that's going on. So I'll be calling you guys from Brazil. So man, yeah. Okay, so we're going to meet you in Brazil. That sounds a lot more fun to have coffee over. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. All right, guys. Well, listen, thanks so much. Bigger Pockets, Facebook. Thank you, Thank you guys. We will talk Hello, to guys. you later and bye bye. All right. Take All right. care.